guys, it's me, Gareth. I'm going to deal with the topic of class three malocclusions today. Now, malocclusion is an orthodontist's term for a bite which isn't in the right place. And skeletal three malocclusions constitute around 5% of the population in the UK, so it is the rarest malocclusion. We know that skeletal three of, of all the skeletal malocclusions has the most genetic component to it. One of the seminal studies on this was a retrospective one in the Habsburg royal family which was first spotted in 1421 in Princess Zimberg of Masovia and remained a defining feature of that particular family for the next 300 years culminating in Charles II who was reportedly so disfigured that he was unable to properly eat or speak. Three quarters of skeletal three cases are caused by a lower jaw that is larger volumetrically than the upper jaw. And then 25% are actually caused by an upper jaw, which is retrusive or smaller volumetrically. It's not uncommon to have crossbites either side, what we know as bilateral crossbites, all sorts of radial mal relationships. There are often facial characteristics. One of them is a large and pendulous lower lip. Often you'll find females will place lipstick on their upper lip beyond the extension of the cupid's bow, so beyond where the lip naturally turns from pink to white to try and hide that discrepancy between the lower larger lip and the upper smaller lip. Often patients will mask that in other ways, sometimes by growing a moustache or sometimes hairstyles or sometimes by pitching their head forwards to mask that relationship. Or when they smile, instead of smiling with both teeth, they will smile with the upper teeth only and the mouth slightly open. We then move on to completely biological methods of masking these discrepancies known as dento-alveolar, so dent-o-tooth, alveolar, which is the name of the bone that houses the teeth, compensation. So this is ways in which patients with skeletal three abnormalities will grow to mask that jaw discrepancy. And often what you'll find is that they will have top teeth that lean forwards and lower teeth that lean backwards. It's a growth compensatory mechanism for the impingement and drape of local soft tissues. Sometimes patients with skeletal three jaw relationships will find that they need to push their jaw forwards to get a comfortable bite because otherwise their front teeth will be biting on top of each other which is an uncomfortable thing. That's known as a reduced envelope function. The difficult part of treating patients with skeletal three jaw relationships is that the growth tends to come later and often more aggressively than it does for other patients. You tend to have what orthodontists call unfavorable or backwards growth rotations which tends to elongate the face vertically and push that lower jaw further forwards. There are four main treatment options. Growth modification, protraction face mask, which is only worn outside sociable hours, so at home and at night, which develops and brings the upper jaw forwards and is thought to restrict the growth of the lower jaw. The second option is orthodontic camouflage, so that's top and bottom braces, to hide as much as possible that relationship with the jaws. That won't do anything to improve the facial appearance of the jaws in profile or on smiling, but it can get the teeth the right way around. You are limited in terms of safe movements for those patients because if you lean teeth excessively forwards or backwards, you risk moving them out of the bony housing, also known as the alveolus or the alveolar bone, and causing recession, mobility of teeth, loss of teeth or death of teeth. And then for more severe or complicated cases, you have what we know as orthodontic decompensation and then what we call orthognathic surgery. So that's surgery to your jaws, often your top and bottom jaw, to either bring the upper jaw forwards, the lower jaw backwards, or a combination of those two. Often you can account for vertical discrepancies in your bite, so either a long lower mid face or a short lower mid face or an open bite or a deep bite by also moving these top and bottom jaws in three dimensions what we know as rotational directions. The fourth treatment option is no treatment and the provision of removable retainers as detailed in another one of my videos. Now there are a few schools of thought on when to time treatment for skeletal three patients. Each patient needs to have an individual treatment plan that's based on how they grow and their family history. So the questions that you want to ask patients who have a skeletal three jaw relationship, the heights of the parents, the heights of the siblings, whether they are continuing to grow fairly rapidly at the moment or whether you feel growth has slowed down. The jaw relationships of both parents and siblings, and sometimes you could go further backwards in the family history as well to see if there's this uh, lineage of a strong lower jaw. 
All of those are proxy indicators for successful outcomes, but none of them are a sure thing. So one of the things we like to do in patients with mid to strong skeletal three relationships is to delay treatment as late as possible, because we know that jaw growth starts to decelerate at the age of around 18 to 22. It doesn't stop completely, and we continue to grow throughout life, but it at least starts to slow down uh, to an area where you can feel you can gauge the velocity of any remaining growth, the velocity and extent of any remaining growth. This is often not what parents or patients want to hear. They want to have their crooked teeth corrected as quickly as possible. And there is a balance to be struck between uh, providing that treatment early and giving someone a as many enjoyable, socially acceptable years as possible, and submitting someone to something that might be non-corrective in the long term, that they might need revisionary treatment, either orthodontic or surgical, at a later stage. And it's all about consent. So I would say that if you're a young child and you have crooked teeth and you want them corrected, and you're told that you need to wait until 18 or 22 to have it formally addressed, then I would completely understand if you wanted them corrected now, um, and we're happy to take the risk that you need another correction at a later stage because from the age of let's say 12 to 18 those are six years that you'd probably like to look as nice as possible and there are other things to consider on the part of the parents whether someone's being teased at school how difficult their life is currently because of the way they smile speak eat anyway that's quite an in-depth view so if it's not too boring and you have any specific questions drop them in the comments and i'll be happy to answer them in another video i can't respond quickly these are these are long-term projects over the remainder of my career i will try to do it relatively soon okay thanks for listening please comment like share and subscribe